All right, guys, here we have a 2006 EasyGo TXT gas. This one here is a full service cart. We're gonna just do a full service on it. Oil change, filters, spark plugs, uh, tire pressure. Brakes are good on this one. I've already checked them. We're gonna check the charging system, battery, and lights. Um, there's no turn signals on this. There's no issues with it. It actually was stored outside at the customer's property. And after about uh, 40 seconds of cranking, it fired up. So there was no issue there. So this is gonna be a basic routine maintenance. Let's get started. I'm gonna to have to bring the jack in this way to get her up in the air because, oh, it's right here. I cannot get the jack under the, the, uh, what am I trying to say? I can't get the back, the jack underneath the footrest because it's like that long and it's too low to the ground. So we got to go to this side, which isn't uncommon. I mean, I've had to do it this way before, but I'm considering building, cause you guys see me, I park these on automotive style ramps, the ones that you drive your vehicle on so you can do an oil change. I'm considering building something that'll allow me to easily move around, but set it in here. So when I drive the carts in, they're already at this height so I don't have to mess around with any jacks or anything. So that, that's something that I'm probably gonna do a video on. I don't know, let me know down below in the comments if that's something you'd like to see me build. All right, we'll do spark plugs first. These things have a tendency of breaking off all the time. Oh. Why is that not coming off? I'm not using the pliers gripping hard. Oh, holy shit. Wow, that did not, it, it wasn't the rubber boot that didn't want to come off. It was the, the electrode. We're gonna use our electric ratchet. We're gonna crank them loose first. And then nice and slow. They're not bad. This one's a little warped. This one, the gap on it is really closed on it. Or this one here looks okay. The plugs are good, really. But when it comes down to stuff like this, plugs are cheap, oil's cheap. You know, as long as you maintenance your cart, you'll have it for a long time. It'll run good for a long time. I know you guys are going to cringe at this. Okay, and then once it hits, I stop and then go to manual mode. See, and I can feel it. Okay. Don't have to go nuts with it it's you know i don't go hard on that with that it's, i just use it i know some of you are going to say oh why are you using electric ratchet on a spark plugs that you're going to ruin them Let's see here. air filter's good he doesn't need a new one we're going to blow that air filter housing out though See the dirt come out of there when I, when I did that? So, in another video I talked about when I was doing tires on a cart, I was talking about these Milton Quick Connects for the air hose. Apparently there's an O-ring in there and it keeps falling off of the lip and that's why it's not closing all the way. Still, I think it's terrible that it does that. That's annoying.
So what I would do normally is blow that out. This filter is not even dirty, so we're not gonna charge it to them or change it on them because if I change it, I gotta bill them for it and it's not dirty. The spark plugs are really not even that bad, but like I said, spark plugs are cheap, oil is cheap, engine oil is cheap. It's not, um, stuff, certain things you don't really want to skimp on. But I don't mind changing out the spark plugs, you know, air filter, something like that. If it's not dirty, I'm not going to change it. Um, you know, that's tight. It's just not sitting very good here. Uh, that belt's good. That belt is a tad loose, can do for a tightening. Uh, let's change the fuel filter before we get into that. Is that is right here. I believe they make a pliers that are specifically for these um, for these style clamps. But channel locks works just as good. There we go. Grab the fuel line, just give it a little twist should pull right out and it is oh. See, the filter itself isn't really bad it doesn't look like they really used this card all that much last year because the tires they actually still have the little nibbles on them the little tits or whatever you want to call them i guess that's a technical term I know in masonry they call them tits, or the blocks meet, the mortar on the blocks. Yeah, unless you're a mason, you don't really know what I'm talking about, probably. Let's check the oil and see what it looks like while we're here. Look at that. That oil barely looks like it has any hours on it, but looks can be deceiving. We're going to change it anyway. We're going to change it anyway, because like I said, oil is cheap. All right, so we're at 12 and a half volts. Okay, just under 12 volts and it's climbing. So let's see, let's get her in neutral. Turn the key on. Passes. Charging system's working like it's supposed to. These terminals are still pretty clean. But. Fight with that terminal and try to get it off. I need a bigger toolbox. I can't believe I filled that thing already. Yes, I know I have other toolboxes in the other parts of the shop, but I'm trying to keep everything in one place. All right, so there's a ground cable. positive so I have these battery terminal cleaners I got these at e-trailer and they're the only ones that carry them I'm not too crazy about e-trailer because their shipping is terrible it takes them forever to get stuff out to be to actually be shipped you know I had ordered something a while back and I paid extra for priority mail shipping which is like two to three days especially from where they're located and it took over a week and I was pretty pissed off about that. So I don't recommend e-trailer because of that. So, but they are, the, they're the only ones that have these at the price that they have them at, which is kind of unfortunate. And all they are, is just a wire brush inside of a cylinder and you use them to clean the battery terminals. That's it, that's all there is to it. Believe it or not, that's like the second time I've used this drill. <laughs> all 
right, so I'm just gonna get in there, clean that. These are still clean from the first time I did them. That's impressive. And there's no corrosion on them, so that's why I'm not all that concerned. Positive first off, or last off, first on. The negative terminal is always first, um, first off, last on. Okay, good. Okay, now we can spray our protectant. The battery's done. And that's really all you have to do. If your battery's not that dirty, you don't have to go, you don't have to go gahunga nuts on it or anything. You just, you gotta make sure there's no corrosion so it has good conductivity, so you don't have any charging issues and starting issues, because without the battery, your life support for the golf cart is nil. All right, shut the key off. We're gonna adjust our belt. I'm gonna show you how to do this. So on this cart, you see that bolt right down here. I'm gonna put my wrench on it. There's two bolts, or at least they're supposed to be. You wanna crack that top one loose. Okay, that's a jam nut, so you crack that top one loose. I don't know if I got it. Yes, I got it, okay. So you crack the top one loose and then the bottom one, you wanna tighten. And that will tighten up your starter generator belt. These are 9 sixteenths nuts and if you have a 9 16 use it not a 14 millimeter so I had to shut the camera off because it was too hard to hold the camera and adjust it at the same time so once you adjust it you tighten down the bottom nut that'll increase tension on your starter generator belt once you're satisfied with that you tighten the top nut down on it while holding the bottom nut to create a jam hence the term jam nut and then you're all set so as you can see, we have very, very little deflection. It's nice and tight. So a little tip for you. Okay, so the only thing really left to do with this is an oil change. All right, I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. Here's the oil filter right here. As you can see, the sometimes these don't come out easily. And I like using this for the speed. I don't use this for the torque or the, you know, the rotational power. It's just for the ease of rotating and spinning those bolts out. All right, let's see if I'm gonna get drenched in oil because of the wind. See, at first glance on the dipstick, the oil didn't look that bad. But now that we... Stop glugging. I should have pulled the dipstick out. There we go. Once, once we pull the oil filter out, it's a much dirtier situation. Now you can see, I don't hope you can see this. The O-ring is still in here. This is something you have to make sure is still in place or replace it. Now you can see the filter is, it's a washable brass style filter and it's clean. These are reusable. They're not meant to be thrown away. The one thing I really like about this generation of cart is how quickly the oil drains out of the motor. This was a good motor. I should say this is a good motor. This is the newer generation of this engine that they uh, did away with the cast iron manifold for the exhaust and it's all, all one unit now when it comes to the 
it comes out of the back of the head. It's just a single port that comes out of the back of the head, which I believe this is the MCI engine. Whoops. MCI. Michael Charlie India. Mike Charlie India, I should say. Uh-huh. Now I'm not going to run these tight with this ratchet. I'm just going to get them in. Because I want to use a I want to use hand force to tighten them. And I don't necessarily want to use okay. Okay. You don't have to go nuts with that. Making sure it's not doesn't stay dripping because if it does then we have to change that o-ring. Okay. All right, see how fast that was? That's what I like about these motors, or these engines. They, they drop oil real fast. But if you're not careful and you're not ready for it, it will make a mess. I've had it where that oil filter pops out when you're taking the bolts out, and it just rains oil everywhere, all over the shop floor. Okay, let's go fill it. You can blow this off with the air compressor, get the dirt away, or wipe it down. It's all the same. You just don't want any big chunks of dirt going down in there. Nice and slow. Because the oil does have to migrate down through the passageways to the crankcase. That's good. I only put as much oil in the jug as I know the engine's going to need. I don't put more in the oil container than what I need because then you have a spill if you have any oopsies. Okay, on the money. And we'll run it. And then all we gotta do is tires. Oh, I gotta grease the front end too, but. Engine smokes a bit. It's either needing going to be in need of rings or valve guide seals. Okay. That's good. All right, the under seat nonsense is done. This isn't something that I've typically filmed in the past. Only because I don't like touching the grease gun and then getting grease all over my camera. Because this is a sucky, messy job. Some of these carts have uh, grease fitting in the steering knuckle, but this one doesn't. Usually it's right down in here. And you only need a couple of pumps. That's it. Does this bottom tie rod have one? No, it does not. That's why I don't normally film this, because there's usually only one or two tie rods that need greasing. Some of them don't even have greasable tie rods, which I absolutely hate that. So, all right, guys, that's it for this one. It is done. I just got to pop the seat on and do the tire pressure check while it's in the air. But like I said, I'm not going to film that because that's boring. All you're going to hear is air hissing sounds and me checking tire pressure. <laughs> boring. When you're doing your tire pressure check, check the sidewall of your tire. Go to whatever it's recommended, I believe. See what these are. 22 PSI on these ones. These are Rocks brand. These are my, these are my brand. Well, not mine, but they're manufactured for Red Hawk, and I am a Red Hawk dealer. So there you go. So all right, guys. As always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Be sure to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Be sure to hit the bell icon to be notified anytime I upload a video to the channel. Check the video's description for links to products I use every single day to bring you these videos and to run my business. We'll see you in the next video.